What a game with a scar. I'm back with another video. Hey, this video is going to be my very first video, my season called Let's Talk About Crime. Um, I just this is just be our first episode of Let's Talk About Crime. Remind you, on this, it's just going to be just like a series where I just do five of them because I want to see how my channel likes this content so y'all we're gonna talk about crimes that happened a very long time ago that people may not know i like to look up on crime that nobody has talked about or i don't see familiar all the time serial killers i want to get to the nitty gritty which means i want to do it from my hometown i'm from east st louis illinois i'm getting most of my in my hometown that I want to talk about so I hope y'all really enjoy this uh, video that I'm making. Disclaimer on this story is a lot of sexual um, assault, kid, children, murder, anything you could think of things are is going on in this story. Like I said a disclaimer if you do not like this content please watch something else that's on my channel. Today we're going to be talking about Lorenzo Fame. He was born April the 2nd 1971 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. He lived with most of his sisters and brothers, and his father was not in his life. His mother was. She, was. she wasn't there, but she was there. But I got from what I was searching and everything. She was there, but she was heavily on drugs. She was on a lot of drugs. The father is nowhere to be found. He was on drugs. They stay in a very high crime area. It was just very low income. A lot was going on. His mother was on drugs. Like I said, the father was not in the picture. The mother was abusing him. I haven't seen nothing else of she abusing the other kids, but Lorenzo said that she was abusing him a lot. I mean, she hit me in the head, bust my head. I still got the scar right here on top of my head. And she didn't take the hospital. Threw me out the window one. This guy wanted my mother to really love her. Cause she used to do all type of crazy shit to me. To the point where he suffered a lot of trauma and beatings. Like she would beat this boy. I don't want to say a victim, but he, he was a victim. Let's just face it, he was very much a victim. Suffered a lot of trauma behind his mama beating on him. In 1978, Lorenzo was sexually assaulted by a neighborhood boy. He assaulted his stepdad. They did say something about the stepdad in the voice recording that I heard from Lorenzo. He said that he was um, sexually assaulted by a neighborhood boy and his stepdad beat him because he didn't do nothing. I mean, this is a child. He's seven years old. So, I mean, it makes sense. He spent a lot of his teenage years on the street. Obviously, his mom wasn't there. His father wasn't there. He had a stepfather, but he really wasn't in the picture either. Um, like I said, the mom was on a lot of drugs. To the point, she couldn't even take her and her kids. She was ne never there. Um, he tended to skip school. Now, what I heard was, what I was looking at, he literally, at some point, he stopped going to school. He eventually just stopped going all together. He was like, fuck it. I'm not going on more. I mean, I mean, I don't have nobody pushing me to do this stuff. So he just stopped going automatically together. Between 1984 and 1989, he was arrested for auto theft and he was stealing and robbing people. His life is fucked up. Like, literally. Lorenzo's life is, is just fucked up it is um sad to say and some cases this might happen and this probably is the reason why he was murdering murdering people remind you he was in multiple he was arrested multiple times but never i'm gonna just get to that i don't wanna i don't wanna get all the way into it but he was arrested for a lot of things so during that time in juvenile he was sexually assaulted again Again, um, he was tested. They gave him a test, an IQ test. Um, the test came back basically saying that he is borderline disabled. He's borderline disabled. His test came back at 60, 68 through 75 points, which means that is borderline disabled. Um, and it makes you realize, like, this man is mentally disabled and he's on the streets. He's on the streets. He's on the streets. Um, 
He finally got out of jail, y'all. He got out of jail and lived with his grandmother in East St. Louis, Illinois around 1989. He stayed there for around four years, right? The following year, 1993, a murder of a 17-year-old, Faith Davis. This is the first victim, y'all. This is the first victim, Faith Davis. I can see if I can pull up some pictures, y'all, but I don't think they have none. I checked. So basically, she lived by the grandmother. That was she was a neighbor. She was the neighbors. So how this was, he sexually assaulted her. Lorenzo, he sexually assaulted her, raped her, and stabbed her to death. He tried to burn the evidence. He tried to get away with evidence. He tried to burn the entire house down with Faith in there. Someone spotted him in the house leaving. They said, oh, yeah, this was Lorenzo. Um, he was he was black. Um, he was pretty tall. Um, they questioned him. The police questioned him. Lorenzo, they questioned him, and they basically found blood stains on his shirt, and also they was searching through his home. They sent him to the police um, station and basically was like, hey, um, did you do this? Like, what's going on? Lorenzo like, hey, I robbed her, but I did not kill her. He said he didn't have nothing to do with anything else, but he robbed her, which was false. He literally raped her, sexually assaulted her. When they found her body, her body was laid on a coffee table, right? She was laying on a coffee table. Her legs was wide open. And it was a lot of grease on her buttocks area. So he he raped her. He raped her and he stabbed her to death and he, he did all that. Basically said, no, I just, you know, I just robbed her. I didn't really kill her. You know, I didn't do that. At the time, August the 4th, evidence came back from another case. His footprints his his prints all together came back on a different case of a six-year-old boy named hunt he was murdered and raped fingerprints came back from a case that happened in 1989 of a young boy he was six years old he was murdered and raped um of july the 14th his stuff came back at this time y'all all these murders that's happening from what I'm speaking of, it was two murders that happened that was around his family house. I mean, and the crazy part about this, y'all, is when they did an interview on him, somebody did an interview, I might let y'all hear what they got to say, but they did an interview on Lorenzo, and he basically had a wife and a son. How is this happening? And you're living with your grandmother. How is this all happening? Like, let's be for real. And he had a job. This is, it's just too much going on. I don't know how you do that. I just really don't know how you do that. So basically, Lorenzo fingerprints came back from another case that happened on a six-year-old. His name was Hunt. And all this happened by his grandmother's house. Now, Lorenzo said his motives was that he wanted to feel good for himself. Like he wanted to make himself feel better by killing kids and raping them. So... Yeah, that was his motive to kill multiple people is to make himself feel better, knowing that he had a whole life while this was going on, a whole entire life. When his family, like, realized what was going on, his grandmother that he was living with basically talked to him and told him, like, hey, did you do this shit? Did you do it? Like, let us know. Like, let me know. Did you do this stuff? She made, she basically um, told him to confess to everything that he did. And he killed a lot of people. I can tell you that. He killed a lot of motherfuckers. He killed a lot of people. And it's just disgusting how this man walked this earth. Basically, he confessed to what he did. And it was multiple murders that he did. I'm going to try to say their names. I'm sorry. My speech is just all over the place but um it was a 14 year old named latandra dean she was raped and stabbed to death march 20th 1992 fallon fallon fluid nine year old strangled strangled and raped july 1992 remind y'all flood is the reason why i wanted to do this case flood was the nine year old that was found in a abandoned gymnasium she was in the locker room he basically lured her into the locker room and he sexually assaulted her. He tried to sexually assault her. 
but he heard somebody coming so he did not finish but he strangled her and he left her in a abandoned locker at this time flood was vacate you know when it's summertime and they'd be like oh you know the school has like lunch for the kids so she was there to like eat her lunch it was just activities i guess and he lured her and he killed her now a 17 year old glenda jones who was raped and stabbed to death june 25th 1993 I swear to you i just possibly just not one i just did not understand but the man literally i'm gonna try to see if i can put a clip in hopefully i don't get copyright but the man he just knew he did wrong but he did not have no type of like guilt like he was just talkative like he was like yeah i did that like you know i don't i, I don't really remember these people are you kidding me also suspected of killing another 16 year old girl her name is nicole wills who was raped and murdered and also being a few hundred meters from the east side school the east st louis high school 1989 he said that he didn't do it in his words i don't remember killing this girl i don't remember i just don't remember i didn't do that um, 1994 he was put on trial for the murder of hunt and was found guilty of all jurors so he like he was guilty i mean he did c confess so i mean sometimes murderers confess for things that they didn't do but he confessed so i was obviously he was gonna get the guilty plea his lawyers basically was like hey like you know lorenzo he was sexually abused as a child he was mentally unstable he really he really didn't think you know don't give him the death sentence you know just give him the life sentence like just give him that could possibly be true that's absolutely true he didn't have a state of mind he didn't know what he was doing he was just doing it because he wanted to make himself feel better so his grandmother testified and she was basically putting him in a like a brighter light like hey like lorenzo was a good child to me like he was really productive like you know he was a really good child and just gave him so much uproar i mean it's his grandmother but like you have to think he killed kids he raped kids while they were dead so I mean, obviously, she would say something different. I mean, she's a grandmother. She basically just was putting him in a lot of light. And Lorenzo was listening to her until he lost his composure. And he just bust out crying. I guess. So, he bust out crying. Voters 11 to 1 came back on a death sentence. But instead gave him life in prison without possibility of parole. In the early 1994 lorenzo was put on trial for the murder of hunt and was found guilty y'all he was pretty much guilty um september 2009 basically dna evidence came back and he was linked to another case of rita scott she was a 32 year old who was beaten to death and a blunt object to the head now i believe this was in milwaukee wisconsin before he even moved to east st louis uh rita scott uh, says, you, oh, well, it says you were linked to, by DNA evidence to the murder of a 32-year-old. Oh, I never knew her name. Wow. Um, that was, oh, I forgot about that. That was October 89. So, really so, so, you are, me about that. so you are responsible for Rita Scott's murder. Milwaukee, right? Milwaukee County. Do you remember how you killed her? With a brick. So you beat her to death with a brick? Yeah. Did you rape her before she was yeah. killed? No. Yeah, after. After? So he could have did multiple murders, to be honest. He could have did multiple things. Um, murder October 27th, 2009. When this time, he did say that he confessed to the murder and he had sex with her corpse. I just, my heart hurts i like it hurts like it just hurts like you how could you have sex with a dead body because before y'all even throughout this entire story he basically said that it was a girl basically the neighbor let's go back to the neighbor the first victim the neighbor said that she wanted to have consensual sex with him 
and he said that you know it just didn't feel the same as her being dead so she was consensual she wanted to have sex with him but he didn't want that it was just like she gave up too easily for him it was just too easy for him now y'all this is the case of lorenzo fame this is all the information that i have got from the vlogs i'm gonna try to see if i can put it down in the description and also the link in the description of the recording he did an interview with a couple of true crime people it was a podcast i will try to see if i can put it in here y'all i hope y'all really like this video this is only a way up to this i really hope y'all like true crime this could be too explicit for you so if you did not watch it it's cool like just vibe just chill with me um but yes this was a very explicit um story it was very explicit i just it just didn't make me feel good i did research about this last year and then i wanted to see this could be my first story because nobody ever heard of lorenzo nobody um and the sight about this was my father knew him my father knew him my father lived down the street from him like it was just a lot of connections going on and my dad kind of told me about it and i was like okay i'm gonna do some more research on this because i like this case i'm gonna see how i go i'm gonna see where he at y'all he is in jail he been in jail i'm gonna just say that he was guilty of all murders he was guilty of all of that he is in jail now um i don't know how old he is right now but i know he's still alive um this is just a failed case of he didn't really have nobody and that's kind of sad to say in this situation but he didn't have nobody his mother was on drugs um it was just too much going on literally too much going on i just think the system was not systeming at that time um, but yeah, I really hope y'all like this, enjoyed this. Make sure you comment, like, subscribe, turn on post notifications to get more videos like this. And I love you so much.